Hi, this is Fred Green with Golf Smarter Mulligans. This is our seventh of nine episodes with the late Tony Manzoni as we spring into the new golf season with these refreshers on Tony's Lost Fundamental Golf Method. This episode was recorded in 2010 and, as with every episode, is also available on our YouTube channel. The difference with this one is that our entire conversation is on video. Now, before video conferencing really caught on in 2020, we experimented with a video platform called Blab. It didn't survive. So I'll put a link in the show notes for you to see it on Golf Smarter TV. Beyond being a unique character, Tony was also a beloved teacher and highly successful golf coach for decades at College of the Desert in Southern California. There are not a lot of skilled teachers who are also master communicators like Tony, which is why we continue to bring him back. Other interesting notes about Tony was that he launched the golf management program at College of the Desert and was one of the original founders at Callaway. But Tony, like many of the instructors we've featured, was not a media darling, and being an old-school instructor, the internet was out of his comfort zone. So Golf Smarter became the exclusive home of Tony's online teaching. To learn more about Tony, please visit our dedicated webpage at golfsmarter.com slash Tony. Tony's book, The Lost Fundamental, One Simple Move, Better Golf Forever, is available on Amazon in paperback and for the Kindle. And his DVD of the same name can now only be seen online through our private channel. To gain access, please write to golfsmarterpodcast at gmail.com or click on the Hey Fred button at golfsmarter.com. Welcome to Golf Smarter Mulligans. Your second chance to gain insight and advice from the best instructors featured on the Golf Smarter Podcast. Great golf instruction never gets old. Our interview library features hundreds of hours of game improvement conversations like this that are no longer available in any podcast app. One thing Venturi told me when I worked with him, and it was really true, is that you can make that little lateral slide towards the target as far as you want. There is a point where your body will turn automatically. It's just that when you make the lateral slide and stop is when you hit that quail to the right. But if you make that little bump where you transfer your weight and just keep going, your body, you will just rotate like crazy. But it's a wonderful feeling because it's a powerful feeling. Where we get into trouble is when we have weight on the right foot as we're hitting the golf ball. Then you can't turn to the left. You just can't do it. And that's where you get lower back problems when you don't get over to the left side before your rotation. You have to get on that left side. That's why setting up 60-40, you're closer to the pivot point because we're pivoting around the left leg. The left leg is the axis for the right-handed player. With another interview from the archives of Golf Smarter, here's your host, Fred Green. Welcome back to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Tony. How are you, Fred? I am doing well. I'm so glad to have you here today live on video. We've never done it this way. This is very exciting. I know it is exciting, except that I keep looking at my face and saying, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to block. I, I put something on my screen to block your face, so I have a tendency to look into the camera and not at your face. But that's okay. not really important right now. Uh, the, what's important is to be able to talk to you again uh, about the lost fundamental and your teaching method. But first, I want to give a little bit of background to everybody on your successes and what you've been doing lately with your golf team. Well, you know, as you know, we, we went 27 years, uh, to, uh, won the conference championship in a row. And we're talking about College of the Desert. Uh, college of the Desert, that's It's right. a community college, college desert, down in the Palm Desert area. And being the coach, I was very proud of that. Uh, we broke last year. We, the streak ended. So we're going to start oh, a new sorry. one. Sorry, uh, it, it was kind of a fluke because the team that beat us, uh, uh, that team and, and our team went to the regional championship, and they didn't make it. We did, and we got to go to the states. And really, in community college golf, if you get to the states, that's like getting to the Super Bowl. So wow. we kind of overachieved to do that. Now this year, I think we're going to have a fantastic team. We have 15 internationals that came in here. Uh, which is wonderful that this program draws that. So I'm very, very proud of that. You should be. That's phenomenal. That's yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Um, so, Tony, we've talked 
many times. Uh, you have a, a little bit of a different uh, method in, in teaching the golf swing. Um, and so let, let's go over it again because you, you're someone who focuses on keeping your weight shift up front, correct? Well, what I try to do is what I, what I perceived Ben Hogan did. I try to stay centered to the golf ball, okay? Uh, and in doing so, I have my right hip in line with the instep of my right foot. And by doing that, you're gonna, your weight is going to be transferred somewhat 60-40, 60 on the left, 40 on the right. Uh, what Hogan did, especially in his later years, uh, he rotated through the ball. And when he turned off the golf ball, he didn't move to the right at all, didn't add any weight. Uh, and so that when he got to the top of the swing, he made that little bump move and then rotated through. And you're, you really get on that left side and you have tremendous power. But more importantly, you can stay connected and hit the ball straight. Um, and do you want to draw? Do you not want to draw? Do you want to hit straight? What do you, what do you well, prefer? Does it really you know, matter? I, mean, I, I tell my boys on the golf team, they have to have a go-to shot. And, and certainly I think a, a little cut shot is terrific with the irons. Um, for the folks that are, have lost distance like myself, we want to draw the ball, especially with the wood. And that's just a matter of setup coming from the inside a little bit more. Uh, but we're still going to rotate through the ball. The club face will just be a bit closed at impact, and that's going to put a little draw spin on the golf ball. But I try to teach my boys to play without any side spin most of the time. And that is attainable, I mean, to, to be able to eliminate oh, that side absolutely. spin. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you, when you connect your left arm to the body, like a arm, make the arm a lever, the body a gear. Mm -hmm. And as those two connect, as you rotate through, you're going to square the club with the turning of your upper body, your chest, because you're going to make your bump to the left. You get on the left side and then rotate. And you watch any of the players today. That's primarily what they're doing. Watch Zach Johnson, for instance. Uh, he's a big rotator, a little, little guy, but he just kills the ball. So, um, you know, some people said, well, aren't you going to lose distance? No, uh, you're not going to lose distance. You're going to hit the ball more square because you're not moving off the ball and then back on the ball. Anytime that you do those things, those are compensations that you have to deal with. What we're trying to do is to play the game without a lot of compensations or even timing elements. We want to play this game uh, in a sense of, a, there's certainly a field game, but there's, it's a robotic move. We want to keep repeating a move. We put our body in a certain position at impact and you're going to get the same result. And, and when you're at impact, where your weight you're saying is it 60% on the front side? No, at impact, no. At impact, almost all my weights on my left foot okay. and my body, in my body, my uh, belt line and chest are somewhat facing the target at impact. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so we're not we're not side to the ball because if you do that, you're going to swing your arms past your body, and the club head will turn over. It will rotate. We don't want to rotate the club head at all. All we want to do is, if you watch Jordan Spieth or some of these fellows, they turn through the ball, but they're not they're not rolling their hands over. Uh, that to me is more like a Scottish style of playing when you're hitting the ball and you're trying to make the ball hit the fairway and roll. The game has changed. Construction of golf courses have, has changed. So we really want to carry the ball a long ways. And to do that, the club head has to be square because when it starts closing, you're delofting the club. Right. Um, you brought up Jordan Spieth. I'm really, we haven't really talked about Jordan Spieth in all the times that we've had you on the podcast uh, because he hadn't been around, actually. Right. Yeah. Um, and somebody even mentioned Justin Rose a minute ago. Tell me what you, uh, you observe when you watch these guys hit the ball and what you well, would have to well, share with them. Jordan, Jordan has a fantastic idea of the golf swing, I think, and it's why he's so consistent. Uh, if you watch his left hand through impact, it's, it's a bit bowed. And it stays bowed all the way around to his left side. So now, uh, pick up your hand and show me what you mean by bowed. Well, I'm, I'm you know, curious. Uh, let's see if I can. So his, his, his hand isn't like this. It isn't flat. It's more this way. So when he goes through, he goes all the way around. His body keeps rotating, and his hand just stays in that position. So it's at the top. At the top of his follow-through, you'll see that the shaft of the club runs across his body. Instead of, be, be, in, instead of finishing like this, his hands are like that at the top. So the... So he's exactly in the same place as Hogan was. If you look at pictures of Hogan when he hit that famous two iron or one, one iron, whatever, there's a lot of conjecture about that. But his shaft ran across this way, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's, what, that's how Spieth is, and that's how a number of players are. Now, you see it a lot more with the iron swing, uh, 
But now we're starting to see people do it with a wood, with, with the driver, where that where there is, it, it appears that there is no release, but the the release is the body release. It's not the it's not tra- traditional roll the hands over. And a lot of people still teach that. And, and I don't think it's wrong, but I think it's harder to do. Interesting. Now, it's not just that Jordan Spieth is a, a great ball striker. He's also a good golfer. And, and I'm really starting to understand the big difference between ball striking and playing golf. Right. Yeah, well, he's, he's, first of all, he's a hell of a putter. <laughs> yeah, right. That's going to win. And gonna he rolls it from everywhere. He, he, it's he amazing. Just, yeah. Just took the stuffing out of that last guy he played because the guy hits it a foot from the hole and he he rolls a forty five footer and you know the guy said what's what am I going to do here What do you do okay. Right Exactly Yeah He's a phenomenal putter and he has a phenomenal short game and he has a great imagination So even when he gets into trouble it seems like he has a shot He so he's obviously practiced that short game from everywhere. He, he gets under a tree, has to go over a tree, has to cut it, or if he hits it straight, it goes in the water, and he just gets up there and just does it. Uh, it's fantastic to watch. He's a very confident player. Uh, when he got busted up by day uh, in that one event, it took the steam out of him for a couple of turns, but then he kicked right back into gear. He's a heck, just great player. That's all you can say. And, man, I'll tell you what, that flat stick, he, not, there's not too many people better. Yeah. Yeah. And it was interesting because, you know, he was performing at such a high level all season long. And then he had a couple of bad rounds and you were kind of wondering, mm-hmm. oh, OK, now he's coming back to being immortal. Um, but then he, he'd shot right back up and it was like, wait, which is his real game? The last event he showed his true colors. He, he's a, he's a very gutty player. And I, I don't think he I think he might have got a bit intimidated when he played with Jason Day and, and he got beat pretty good. And I think it was the PGA. Um, and I think it affected him for a little bit. But he's a real bounce back guy. You yeah. know, some people, they, they get in that lull and they stay there. Uh, he, he, he's got that he's got that fight in him. You know, even the way he walks, he might have a gunslinger. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm really, really impressed with him. Well, and you I should love be. His, I love his demeanor. He's fiery. Yeah. He'll get a little hot for a second, but then he lets it go. But he, I think he represents golf the way you're supposed to be represented he he seems to be a very good sport yeah. even when he got beat uh and in that he had, he waited till the playoff was done to shake zach johnson's hand he waited around you don't see you don't see that too often in any sport really. in any sport no as a matter of fact there was that one shot um on tv when you know he was giving a thumbs up to uh, his yeah, exactly. his playing partner for making exactly. a, a a decent putt, I mean, he got it close. He didn't get it in, but he was still like encouraging his playing partner. He's a class act. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's a class act, and I and I think it's sincere. I, I don't think I don't think he's faking that to try to look like a good guy or anything like that. Yeah. I think that's just that's who he is. You see that even in the family when he wins a tournament. That, the sister and all that is just very close knit. And, you know, I, I love that about him. And I try to tell my, st- my players on the team, watch how he acts. Now he's on the tour fellas and you don't see him dropping his club when he doesn't hit a. I hate that when somebody swings and they let go of the club because they didn't hit the ball the way they wanted. That seems to be a, some trend. I don't know who started it, but it's a terrible looking thing. It looks, I don't know. I, I can't say it on the air. <laughs> sure you can we're not you can say whatever you like it really doesn't yeah. really matter <laughs> you work with students you work with dare i say kids that are the same age as jordan what can you teach them by having them watch jordan well you know work ethic for sure uh character uh, on the golf course uh, watch how he dissects the golf course when he plays. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a thinking player. Uh, he's not the longest guy out there, but he knows how to score. Uh, and and again, the short game it plays a major role in his golf game because even when he's off, he's still on because he can get the ball up and down. And even and how many times you see him knock it out of a bunker from a horrible lie into the hole? Uh, yeah. That beats the heck out of the other guy's psyche. I can tell you that. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. uh, your name came up recently on an episode when I was talking to um, Jim Venetis. Okay. You know Jim? I know the name, but I'm not familiar. familiar Jim, with Jim's guy, he, he loves your approach. 
Uh, he's in Southern California as well. And okay. he, he, what he does is he puts, I, it's hard to, for me to explain. He does it so beautifully, but he has you put most of your weight, like 60, 40, even almost 70, 30 on your front foot. But you put yourself in a position where you're like, you're at the top of your backswing, right? Mm-hmm. That position there, your left foot is bent. Your back is almost to your target. He has you start there. And so you have very little movement in your swing at all. Um, in your body, and and the center of your swing is not your spine, but the center of your swing is over your left foot and where the ball is, mm-hmm. so that you're rotating there. Um, mm-hmm. And he talks about stillness, just trying to be as still as possible. Yeah, many years ago when I was with Callaway Golf, when we first started, you know, we had Paul Runyon, and Paul used to tell me someday people are going to understand how important it is to swing around the spine. And that's exactly what this is all about. It's, it, we don't move that spine left and right. We, we, it's, it's pretty stable. We center it, to the, some, center it somewhere to the golf ball. Some people like it in the front of the ball. Some people like it just in the back. Mm-hmm. But if the, the more centered you can stay in the golf swing and still be free and fluid, uh, you're going you're gonna to be able to repeat your motion. When we're moving back and through, back and through, how are you, how are you going to repeat that? And so, uh, as I tell everybody, I don't think that's wrong. There's a lot of guys like Curtis Strange that move way off the ball and move way back on it. But I think as you get older, uh, you can't do it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you can't do it. Because, and well, as you're getting older, too, things aren't, you're not as flexible, obviously. No, no, you're not as flexible. And, and plus the fact, under pressure, the first thing that runs down your leg is your is your ability to time things. That's why we we're always so good on the range. And then we get in a tournament, and all of a sudden, what we perceived was our golf swing doesn't exist anymore because everything feels awkward. See, and that's just that's what the nerves do to you, where you feel you feel a bit lost. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so the more that you can s- understand where your body has to be at impact and practice that. Um, it makes the game a lot easier, I think. Well, this game is not easy. Come on. <laughs> well, it's not even a game, first Stri- of all. It's striking. a challenge. Yeah, right it's really exactly. a game. Yeah. If it was a game, I could have quit a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes yeah. ball striking, perhaps, a little easier. There's a lot yeah, more to the can, game you, than you ball know, striking. The secret of the game is, that, is to be able to repeat your action, even if you come over the top. Bobby Jones came over the top. Sam Snead came over the top. But they came over the top the same all the time, so their their shots were always predictable. Look at Trevino. I mean, the, his approach to playing the game. But it's he's a master because he learned to do that time and time again under any kind of uh, situation. And, and that's a mark of a player. And what is it that amateurs do that they're missing out on? What are there... God, I hate saying, are there simple fixes? But what have you noticed that amateurs do on a regular basis that are just, they're just one little element away from correcting it all? Well, most amateurs I see, uh, and I certainly haven't seen them all, but most of them that I see have have no pre-shot routine. Uh, When they get over the ball, they don't have an intention. They're thinking about all the things they don't want to do. Uh, What I tell my players is that you've got to get to the point where you have an intention and, and then you try to match that with your performance. And there's times when you're trying to hit a little cut shot and you'll hit it straight or you pull it. But the more that you clean your mind of, of thoughts, of especially swing thoughts, and, and think in terms of, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit this ball a little left of the green and bring it into the pin. Get those kind of feelings and that kind of visualization. Uh, because there's a point where I think, I think the mechanics have to stop. You have to eventually trust that this is my swing. Now let's see. Let, let let me make it work. And you know the old story of Hogan, uh, somebody came to Hogan and said, you know, I'm hitting everything about ten yards right. And and that he asked him what what clubs do you play? And they said, well, I play. Well, it wasn't a Hogan brand. He said, well, talk to him. He said, and by the way, just aim a little a little bit more to the left. That's awesome. So I mean, in in a sense, that makes a lot. You know, in a sense, that's right. If you if you're cutting everything, play for a cut. You know, mm-hmm. why not? You're right. Right. And you talk about intention and the swing thought of the target. And I thought that's interesting because I know so many people have so many swing thoughts at any given time of, you know, your hips, your shoulders, your arms, your hands under strong, weak, you know, ball position. Those are all the swing thoughts. Those are all the thoughts that are going on before the swing as opposed to 
visualization or focusing on what the end result should be? And, and, you know, if you're a teacher like I am, I teach a lot of people. I teach real high handicaps. I got a little nine-year-old that's won 16 tournaments. I mean, he's a phenom. This wow. guy, if, if he doesn't make it to the tour, nobody will. I mean, he can hit any shot you want. If I tell him hit a low cut, hit a high cut, flop shot, anything, and he's nine. Okay, nine? Nine years old. How, His how name far is does – And sorry. he can hit a ball. He, with roll, he can hit a ball 200 yards, and he is a little nine-year-old. Not a big nine-year-old. I'll send you a video of him some uh, sometime. It, it, it's crazy, but the point is, is that as a teacher, you're constantly talking technique. You're talking the how-to. Mm -hmm. uh, so as I go to play, I really have to shut that off because I can't even draw the club back if I listen to my thoughts. And I tell my players the same thing. You, uh, you take a lot of instruction, but you've got to let go of that. You, you, you got to put the time in on the driver in so that that instruction becomes feel. And then you have your swing and you have your feel. Uh, you know, I, my guys say, well, coach, where do you put it in the backswing? He says, well, you put it where your body dictates. You don't, you don't, you don't put it in a position. And it's not important if the club is a little shut or a little open. It really doesn't mean anything there. What, what only thing it means is that impact. You want that left wrist somewhat flat, maybe somewhat bowed, a bowed a little bit. And that comes from, that comes from a good rotation and, and and letting the body pull the arms. If you throw the arms first, they're going to cup most of the time. Hmm. Too much going on in our heads? Well, of course. I think that what what game have you ever played that was so dissected? Right. You know, I played baseball, football, everything. And, you know, I, when I threw a spiral and it didn't go, I didn't break everything down. I just picked the ball up and threw a spiral. <laughs> Golf. You know, golf, I mean, just imagine if we treated walking the way we do golf. You trip and you say, holy, I got I to gotta start all over, okay? <laughs> golf, we do that. Even at the highest level, we do it. Uh, we're all seduced by the thought there's something out there that we don't know. It's yeah. prevalent in the game. Yeah, uh, no, that's no true. Things about it. But I think that's the charm of the game in a way. Think well, about it. Yeah, tell me. What other sport, I mean, what other sport can we play that we get such a thrill out of? Uh, you know, I can't go play football anymore yeah. uh, or baseball or track and field. And I was pretty good at all of them. But golf, every now and then I can hit a shot that nobody can do any better. I can fly a shot into the hole or I can make a 40-foot putt. Can't do any better than that. Right. So there's a there's an aspect to the game that is 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 wonderful. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are a number of Golf Smarter listeners who are participating in this conversation right now. Um, and if they, you know, I'm sure that they, I, actually the people that I, I witnessed already, I know that they've heard conversations that we've had before on the Golf Smarter podcast. Um, if they are interested at all in uh, joining in the conversation, uh, type in slash Q. Uh, here on Blab, and you can get your question up there. Uh, or if you'd like to join, I'll unlock the video here. I have an open seat. If uh, one or two of you would like to join and ask Tony a question yourself, you're more than welcome to join us. I would love to have you along for that. Um, Tony, explain to me what stack and tilt is and why I should either consider it or ignore it. Well, I don't want to really say. You know, <laughs> We're not talking about any person. Know, I, I don't want to say I don't <laughs> do it. I'll, I'll just tell you what my experience was. Stack and tilt is a, a little bit different. They want that left shoulder to go down. And on the downswing, they want the left shoulder to go up and the right shoulder to go down. And you end up in what we used to call the traditional uh, C position. Uh, and it's a, an abbreviated uh, finish. It's not. It's not a full finish. It's kind of an abbreviated stop at that position. Uh, I've tried it, and, and it hurt my back. Really? Uh, I've heard that uh, from and, multiple people, that a stack and tilt is really bad for the back. I, I, again, my guru is, is, is the best ball striker of all time, and that was Ben Hogan. Mm -hmm. Now, he did not divulge everything he did or a, a, in his books, obviously. But there's enough film on him, especially after he had the accident, that you can see he did specific things. He certainly was on his left side at the top of the swing. And he even said, I'm going to play off my left side from now on. Uh, he made that statement to a number of pros. It, it wasn't in power golf or the five fundamentals, but he did make that statement. And he did say something that I, that's always stuck in my head. He, I want you to, I want you to turn level left. Okay. So he didn't, he wasn't a tilter. He didn't bring his right shoulder up. 
he, he wanted you to turn level through the golf ball. Now, the right shoulder's got to be lower than the left because your hand's right hand's lower than the left hand, but not significantly. He didn't want that right shoulder on the downswing to come straight down because if you're looking at me, you can see that when I do that, my head weight is going away from the target. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. So he wanted you more rot- just rotate the body. And he finished, if you look at his fo- follow-through, he finished very posted up in a straight line. He was not tilted back like a lot of players from his era. And so he had that he had that posted up position, and I see that all the time now. I see that I don't see that arch back. Excuse me, that arch back position that we did. That was you know, and during Hogan and even Palmer and so many guys from that period had lower back problems because of that movement. Hmm. It's not a natural movement. It really isn't. Right. And the swing is the swing is through impact is more shallow. You see the hands more going uh, the exit to the left more. Low, the hands are closer to the left pocket as they exit. You don't see the shaft going up as much as, as you did that. It, it, people are more around the body than with a high finish. And I think, consequently, the, the path of the swing is longer, so you're gonna, you can generate more power. But if you extend the path of your swing, are you adding more issues i mean uh, th- more can go wrong if you extend it no because if you're if, look at if i move like this okay my arms are extended as far as they can be based on the fact that they're connected to my body i, I would never want to move my arms out and away from my body when i'm hitting the golf ball because now the club head is in, in in control the club head because it's heavier than the handle will roll over but when i have this connected and i turn my body this way to hit where I just rotate my body kind of like Annika Sorensen did, did mm-hmm. and a, a number of players that are rotators, then you it's kind of like a slap shot uh, with a hockey stick. You know, you're know, you not moving that hockey stick with your arms. You're moving it with the turning of the body and the, and the transfer of the weight, obviously. Uh, and, and that's just a way to play. And, and I think Hogan figured that out. That's why he said in his later years, I'm going to play off the left side from now on. Uh, because he lost a lot of energy in his legs because of the accident. And he realized that if he was closer to the axis when he rotated his body, he didn't have that lateral slide didn't have to be quite so far to the left. And he could spin faster. And consequently, the faster that rotation is, the faster your club head is, or should be anyway. Recently, I, I had a lesson um, and had a couple of epiphanies in this lesson. Uh, one was that I, I realized for the first time and after playing for nearly 20 years um, that I was not, let's see if I can bring it up here, um, my club head, when I was bringing the club head back on the backswing, I was just going straight back as opposed to rotating it so that the, uh, right, the, the, club was kind of it's hard to do on this video so yeah, you know, instead of going saying. like yeah. this i i'm now coming back yeah, at it, yeah. right um and yeah, all of a sudden i was hitting a draw for the first time yeah yeah well you got your right right wrist because on the back on the correct backswing there's the, the left arm rotates slightly uh, we don't want to roll the club back but the left hand does rotate a bit so the club the toe opens a tiny bit going back and as you get to the top the 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 golf swing, the, the toe isn't pointing straight down. That would be open. It's it's more this way. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, so, but a lot of people take the club back and they take it too much this way. Or the let's see if I can make my hand. They take it more that way. Okay, mm-hmm. so they get the club actually shut at the top, uh, and that's a tough way to play because you're going to go shut to open. Right. You're not going to go shut to shut. You know. So. And the resulting ball flight would be. Well, you're going to hit a lot of shots with the face a bit open. Uh, and you're going to hit a, sh- a lot of shots higher than you should, and you're not going to be able to put pressure on the golf ball because it faces. So it's a deflecting kind of uh, impact instead of a compression impact. Right. Right. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to put compression or you know, pressure on the golf ball as we hit it. So as we're as our as we're releasing our core and 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 the arms are just connected, and then we're hitting like that. We're hitting with all our weight transferring to that left side, banging that ball, and then the, and then of course we go back to the we turn, you know, you can, one thing Venturi told me when I worked with him and it was really true is that you can make that little lateral slide towards the target as far as you want. And, you, and you, th- there is a point where your body will turn automatically. It, it's just that when you make the lateral slide and stop is when you hit that thing, that 
coil to the right. But if you make that little bump move where you transfer your weight and just keep going, you're about, you're, you're, you will just rotate like crazy. Yeah, and it's, it's a wonderful feeling because it's a powerful feeling. Where we get into trouble is where we ha- when we have weight on the right foot as we're hitting the golf ball. And then you can't turn to the left. You just can't do it. Uh, and that's where you get really lower back problems when you when you don't get over to the left side before your rotation. You have to get on that left side. That's why setting up 60-40, mm-hmm. you're closer to the pivot point because yeah, we're pivoting around the left leg. The left leg is the axis for the right-handed player. Okay, so we're not going to pivot off the right foot for sure. And that's what most people do, and you see them fall back when they hit a golf ball. Right. Um, and I, that has a, been a huge problem for me for a long time is having my weight mm-hmm. back. Um, I'm still sometimes, sometimes only, am I able to hit the ball first, then hit the ground and, and put enough compression on the ball. But with my weight back or you know, turning and falling back on my swing, I, yeah, I'm the, not... The club's going to steepen, and you're going to hit behind the ball. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so many people hit behind the ball, uh, you know, thinking that not understanding that the, that the bottom of the swing and the swing is a circle. So the bottom of the mm-hmm. swing is in front of the ball. So That's many right. people, uh, you know, and they hit two, three inches behind the ball and then top the ball and say, oh, I lifted my head. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the old adage. You know, I, when you top a ball, you don't lift your head. What you do is you tighten your hands up. Your arms get shorter and everything pulls back. You can, I can look down at the golf ball and I can hit the most fantastic top shots you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> so I'm not looking up at all. All I'm just doing is, in fact, when we were kids, we would see who could swing the hardest and hit it the shortest. I mean, when I say the shortest, I mean two or three feet. Uh, and all we did, all you did is just prior to impact, just squeeze the handle and that flexes the forearms and everything pulls back and you skin the top of the golf ball because right. there's no way to swing 90 miles an hour and barely hit the top of a ball. But that's what the average person does. They're just anticipating impact. And the old adage about swing through the ball or pretend the ball isn't there or whatever, treat it as a soap bubble or, you know, you've heard nine million things. But we have to get our mind off the impact. We have to think position one to position two, ball's in the middle of that. But so many people play to the ball, and so they decelerate. At a, a huge rate, everyone decelerates. Everyone does. No, I don't care who it is. No one accelerates through the golf ball. It's really? not possible. Yeah, it's a sci- scientific fact. But the great players accelerate at a much less rate. Okay. Yeah. When there's some, when there's an object there. Uh, oh, you decelerate because you're hitting something. It's slowing you down. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I get yeah. it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now let's talk about the right elbow. Right. It's another thing that uh, in, in this epiphany lesson that I had was not only just rotating my hands, rotating through, but he had me. Um, and you, you hear so many instructors talk about putting a glove under their arm, uh, you know, and avoiding, you know, lifting. I'm, I'm using my right arm here, lifting right, it out right. or the chicken wing. Right. Right. So where, where, where do you think it's most important to keep your your arms and your right elbow uh, during your golf swing for a right-handed golfer, obviously. Okay. The, the problem with that kind of thinking is that we have a tendency to get stuck with the right arm against the side of the body as we go back. So we don't free up. We don't let that, we don't let this natural position happen. Uh, there have been a lot of great players, including the best, you know, the best player in the world based on record, Jack Nicholas. Jack Nicholas had his elbow pointed out dr x i can't think of his name right now but he won a lot of germans and he was like this mm-hmm. so you know and those are prefer- personal preferences i mean furic has a little bit of an action that way the thing is you must do is keep your right you know you keep your your armpit closed but there should be a space f- between your elbow and your right position right uh, right side and then when you rotate into the ball that elbow will work into that slot it just will Okay, uh, you can't put it there. Believe me when I tell you, because I've tried and almost broke my arm. <laughs> you can't. You can't do. There's certain things that have to happen, like a domino effect. But if you get your body in the right position, those things occur. You get it. You get that elbow hits. It's kind of the front of the hip, not not the side, not the back of the hip. You know. Mm-hmm. But as as you take the club back, you know your arms are connected, and there's they form kind of a triangle. Okay, and as we as we turn, and we're not turning this way. So see how my head is moving. You're, you're turning this way. The, 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 this part of your pectoral muscle is going back and up. Okay, so that just slots the club 
based on your anatomy, your flexibility, and so forth. So some people, you know, I have the club just about shoulder high. Some people are up here, but most everyone I see is about here. See, so there's a little bit of a space, and then then it just works back in. Uh, it's important that the elbow's where it's supposed to be, but I think you have to have a motion that it goes there. I don't think you can focus on that because then you're going to shut down other parts that are very important. Can you take your arms too far back? I mean, and I'm not oh, tra- now I'm talking about amateurs because some guys who, who have incredible club head speed, they're going to rear themselves way back here. But I mm-hmm. see so many amateurs that are trying to take, um, you know, swings that just go all the way around their body. Are they going too far? Is there a limit of sure. how far you should be sure. going? Uh, what, what I tell my students, now look, there are people that take it back. John Daly took it, you know, crazy back. And the guy that hits it the farthest, that little kid from Canada and the long drive guy, he hits it, weighs 160 pounds, he hits it 400 yards. And this club is pointing down on the ground. But the, <laughs> 400 yards, truly. Uh, wow. But those are those are very unique situations where people are double jointed, triple jointed. And, and they can time it. But the average person, when your back is facing the target, that's the limit. Okay, so when you're oh, at 90-degree turn, don't worry about your hands. Just get your back to the target, okay? Your hands will be in the right place. And, and it's all based on your anatomy. So just like when you threw a baseball, you didn't never thought about the position you put your hand in. You just, your body turned and you reached back to where you felt strong. That's how you have to treat the golf swing and the backswing. Uh, you don't want a lot of movement in the back. So the, the quieter your hands are as you turn so that you turn that whole piece, it'll find the right position. But when you start stretching back like this, that's an additional timing element that you have to deal with. And most of the time, most people, when they overswing, they're going to throw that club from the top. It, it just it, it just is what's going to happen. Hmm. Well, for podcast purposes, um, we're going to take a little bit break here, but not on Blab. Um, But we're going to take a short break so I can make some announcements. But I'd like to come back and just get one short, brief tip from you. Um, And I guess we can talk about swing mechanics and and body rotation, but anything that you'd like. So, But first, I want to open it up to the audience again. Uh, If anybody has a question for Tony or myself, please Either type in your question, slash Q, and then type it in. Or if you want to join in on the conversation, there's a, an open seat here. We've got two of them. If, you have, if you'd like to talk to Tony, you're more than welcome to do so uh, right now. Yeah, I'd love to. Love, love to discuss the swing with – even. Uh, in fact, I'd love to discuss the swing with someone that doesn't agree with me. That would be terrific. That would be awesome. Um, you know, because, because we can all learn. Yeah, I mean, and that's the whole point of why we're here is exactly. uh, is just try to get a couple more nuggets in here uh, to take them with us to the golf course. Um, and then we'll take them to the range and the golf course, but the key is taking it from the range to the golf course. That's, that's the right. Hard, that's, that's the right. hard that's part. The, that's the thinking part. Yeah, it's is not that, the physical. That, right, that's more, that's more in your head, right? Yeah. 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 All right, Tony, listen, uh, I'm going to take a short little break here and then let's come back and get uh, a tip or two or just a piece of advice from you that that should be just fine. Sure. Now let's get back to Tony Manzoni and some advice on the importance of finding the right golf instructor for you. I think that we all all need some kind of a confidant, somebody to guide us. And so I would find a, a golf professional, PGA member primarily, but there's a lot of guys that aren't PGA members that are very good teachers. Find someone that you trust and someone that's passionate about your ability to play. And if you have that uh, and someone that has a passion for learning the game, I still read. I, I, I think there's a lot more to learn. Uh, to simplify this motion. Uh, But if you have those elements, uh, then you've got a good partner that can bring you along to the point where then he can let you go and and you don't you don't have a lot of swing thoughts. You get get up there and just play the game because that's it. That's really the you got to enjoy playing this game and, 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 and well, this challenge. And I should say <laughs> we can call it a game. It's just a game. Don't take it seriously. Yeah. Well, or that's too serious or too seriously. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's. I wish I could do that. Even to, at my advanced years, I still take it pretty serious when I'm out there. 
And you have to share with everybody here. Okay, so how old are you now? Come on. I'm just turned 79. Congratulations. And, uh, Happy birthday. Thank you. I, no, I feel good. I, I, and, I'm lucky. I, I, I thank my grandparents for that. I, I have pretty good genes. But I will say this. When I go out and play with the golf team, it's a tough pill to swallow. They're 20. These are kids. And, you yeah, can't be 70 yards behind them because I used to be pretty long, and, and those days are done. Yeah. So I work on my short game and putting. That's all I can do. Right, right. So 79 years old. How many mm-hmm. times have you shot your age or lower? Just about every time I play. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I can still shoot it pretty close to par most of the time. So then it doesn't matter how long, right? It, it, I mean, people keep talking about length, 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 and here you are shooting in this low 70s, mid to low 70s, and you're saying you don't hit the ball as far as you used to. Well, yeah, but I'm not playing from the tips anymore either. I'm not playing. On, I'm not playing the ladies' tees, but I, I just play the regular men's tees. I don't go back to the tips. Uh, when I'm playing those 470-yard par fours, you know, I'm, I'm beating a wood on that second shot where I used to be hitting maybe a five iron, six iron, seven iron. So, um, but you know what? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, in fact, it's very helpful for my students to see that I can get it up and down most of the time and I can knock that putt in that I have to make and that that illustrates that you don't have to hit it 300 yards to shoot great golf or good golf anyway 